uh, it's your first time here on Sonic Arts Festival? It's my first time at Sonic Arts. Uh, what do you think about the theme which was chosen this year, like the noise of being? And how does it interact maybe with the notions of human? Mm. I was wondering about that, how that was chosen. And I was thinking maybe that noise had something to do with signal a code or a tracing that we leave behind. So it's not just that we're living in a, a vat, but that there's we know that we're there because we make noise, that we shuffle. And so in my presentation too, I sort of interpreted it as such, that there is being, but there's this tracing, there's this printing or signal that reminds us that we're there. We are not the noise, that we're always living with it and among it. And what do you think about uh, the, I mean, I, I'll be a little bit philosophic, <laughs> but still, what do you think about the future of human and what, how do you understand the, the modern technologies which are being developed like very with the high speed and the, the human which is not as mechanic as, as robots are? And what are the future, what can be the future of human then? Well, even if the machines are seemingly growing more advanced, I think more than anything they're trying to mimic or further what the human can already do. So how a lens can see brighter and better and further than a human eye, how microphones can pick up greater and better than the human ear and so on. Um, it's hard to talk about hope and lack of hope. I think um, technology is in, in many forms and I think I can't really think about it without thinking of the military industrial complex, without thinking about how with every advancement forward we're also advancing brighter and better ways to kill each other and that we might see each other as very separate from that, that the state or the military are separate from us but we're actually the same species. So um, in my field where I use the most advanced technologies that are afforded to me, available to me, or I use them as a consumer. Um, it seems like a hopeful thing that our work will be better, our communication will be better, and I think it is, but um, until we recognize that um, those are false premises, that advancing um, and advan advancing artistically and commercially and in other ways, and advancing instruments of killing and violence and torture, that if we move side, if we move those things forward side by side, then I don't know if we'll have much of a human species to speak of. And what do you think about the masks? Can it be an instrument for further future? I mean, mask is an instrument for the humans to, to have. A, what is the role of mask? What is the role of the mask? Um, I think I wanted to show how the mask has a role in both the person who wears it and the way that it's imposed by someone else. So a government, a state, an entity can impose a mask on you. Um, you can take it up yourself. But ultimately I wanted to think about the way in which the covered and uncovered face actually have a lot more in common than we think. Um, that there's something very truthful seeming about the mask that what I was saying about it can't be represented, it can only be repeated, and the false truth that we think exists in the face at all times, that the open face is some kind of marker, that the fact that it's revealed to us marks its truthfulness. I think the mask can be very useful in rewriting that to us and telling us that we actually, it's not a choice between being masked and unmasked or covered and uncovered, but actually in, in seeing how we identify, that do we identify with our face as a part of us, or all of us, or is there such such a thing as being beyond the face, which more and more my work is moving toward.